I served in the Army from October 1967 to the end of July 1970. Um, my specialty was uh, military intelligence and I also received training in the Vietnamese language before I deployed to Vietnam in September of 1968. Um, as far as positive experiences in the military are concerned, I would say that um, basic training was kind of an adventure and I also enjoyed being in language school and um, going through the process of learning a new language, although that was only a 90-day experience. Um, negative experiences are most certainly uh, all involved with being in Vietnam and um, experiencing the brutality of war, something that I felt completely unprepared for, um, especially psychologically. Um, my job in Vietnam was to provide intelligence to the um, infantry battalions of the 2nd Brigade of the 25th Infantry Division. I had Vietnamese informants who would provide uh, information that I would then develop into combat operations. Typically it was necessary for me to accompany the Vietnamese source uh, with the infantry unit, whether that was a battalion or a company or even as small as a platoon to uh, exploit the targets. So that I got into the field quite a bit and experienced a uh, some degree of combat um, in October 1968 was the first time that I was in combat and that was a very traumatizing event that um, basically caused me to sever my connection to my emotional life. I just felt the uh, witnessing of the death of uh, several Vietnamese combatants and one American that died practically in my arms um, was very traumatic and I kind of felt very numbed after that experience and remained that way until the end of my tour and beyond. Um, in addition to being in combat, I also uh, witnessed and participated in um, some very brutal interrogations of both enemy combatants and civilians where people were tortured or uh, physically beaten in order to try to obtain information. Um, let's see, uh, in 1973, four years after returning from Vietnam, almost uh, to the date, it was August of 1973, I started having a, a deteriorating mental state where I was having very obsessive thoughts about Vietnam. I couldn't get Vietnam out of my mind and I was thinking about it all the time. I was smelling it. Um, I was very depressed and um, anyway that culminated in, in an experience where I had a hallucination one day while eating lunch in a downtown Atlanta park and um, what I saw was whipped cream all over people's faces so that I couldn't see their face. It was like a white fluffy mask that everybody's face had and everything was like without sound, like a silent movie and that didn't last for very long but it was a very startling experience and um, one of the things that happened as a result of that is that I felt this impulse to make a drawing of it. Um, that was kind of odd in the sense that I hadn't even thought about art since I was in the eighth grade in high school and took one semester of art as a required class and uh, had not done anything with it much since then. And um, But somehow, instinctively, I wanted to make a drawing of this hallucination. And making that drawing sort of awakened something in me that um, was very powerful and, uh, I don't know, it felt good. It felt like I was releasing something through making that drawing and it, this impulse continued and I started making more drawings and drawing one drawing led to another and the subject was never 
something that I considered beforehand. I just sat down with a sketchbook and a pen and things happened. And um, so that was very interesting and it took over my life. I quit my job, I sold my belongings, I devoted myself to art at that point and that basically has continued since that time. Um, Making art, as I've described, is a very intuitive experience where I don't have any ideas in my head before I do it. My understanding is that making art is a way of reconnecting to my emotional life and uh, the emotions especially that I severed from when I was in Vietnam and um, those are necessarily negative emotions. But somehow art gives them a form and a reality that they wouldn't have if they just remain unexamined or unreleased uh, inside of my, my head or wherever emotions reside. Um, it's kind of like an exorcism, I suppose, that getting it out is a way of restoring a certain kind of balance or wholeness to my, my being. it's overwhelmingly therapeutic, which made me, made it difficult for me to um, think of myself in the traditional sense of being an artist. I thought I was mainly just working on myself. I, in the beginning I was also doing this in conjunction with being in psychotherapy. At the time the, the term post-traumatic stress disorder didn't even exist and um, when I went for a psychiatric evaluation in order to get uh, help paying for therapy from the state of Georgia, I was told that I was a borderline schizophrenic and um, that was pretty alarming to hear that. But I stayed in therapy for five years and uh, now it's 41 years later and I'm still making art and still doing it within the same context of just letting it happen to me rather than my trying to force any issues about subject matter or media or anything of that sort. I just have impulses and I follow those impulses. Um, it seems to be working very well in the sense that it gives me a, a purpose for doing, uh, for living my life really. Not that there aren't other important things going on, but as far as thinking of how you know one focuses one's life in terms of a career or something of that sort, uh, it just so happens that my career is trying to restore my psychological balance and um, that's what I've been doing um, ever since this began in 1973. Um, and as far as media are concerned, I mainly do uh, painting and sculpture, although I have done also some collages and things of that sort, uh, even some ceramics, but mainly I like doing sculpture uh, because of the physicality of that and the um, the expenditure of energy seems to be uh, an important aspect of what I do in both painting and in sculpture. In painting, the process involves putting paint on, sanding it off, putting more paint on, sanding it off, and gradually something resolves itself through that process, although there have been times when things have never been resolved. Um, but generally speaking, I come to a feeling of completion with the work, even though it might take months. Um, the sculptures, I've done things from modeling clay to stone carving to now working with um, you know, an additive process using newspaper and um, foam insulation and things of that sort, cardboard. Um, it's kind of an adventure. It's somewhat limited by the amount of space that I have to work in. And, uh, I would imagine I could do huge things if I had a huge space, but uh, I have to content myself to work within my limits. Um, again, the method is very intuitive. I don't, I wouldn't want to know what I was doing. I think the whole attraction to making art is to explore the mystery of, of how something is working itself through me. It's, it's like a you know, for lack of a better description, it's like there's something or someone in me that 
is finding uh, concrete reality through the making of art and, and that becomes an expression of whatever it is that wants to come out and, uh, and it becomes real in that sense. So that's, that's how the therapeutic aspect of it works. Um, the subject matter beyond a phase in the beginning when it kind of uh, evolved from making sketches of people with whipped cream on their faces to abstract kind of shapes, usually kind of organic abstract shapes that had a figurative um, feeling to them. And then that very quickly evolved into uh, faces, and faces became a very uh, prevalent subject matter that I was drawing one face after another. And, uh, and then that became figures, and then figures became occupying landscapes or something, that, that sometimes figures, faces, and landscapes all end up in the same image. And, uh, but typically you would say that there's something figurative, even in a landscape where the image of a tree might stand in for the uh, feeling of something figurative. Um, the sculptures, on the other hand, uh, are sort of follow that same uh, feeling in terms of a lot of head images or figurative images. Um, my latest uh, explorations have been in combining sculpture and painting into relief sculptures where the uh, surface is painted on. Uh, I haven't really successfully uh, in my my way of working felt like I've achieved what my impulse has led me to believe I should try to to achieve, um, but I have kind of not been pursuing it much lately due to uh, circumstances in my life. Um, the therapeutic nature is uh, just overwhelming and uh, it's colored by not just, you know, how I go about or think about making art, but uh, I was also um, an art teacher and it was always in the back of my mind that somehow art could be therapeutic in many different capacities, whether it's occupying one's mind as one, you know, just to have something to do or whether there was a, a actual overt exploration of specific issues that people might have and not dissimilar from my own situation, things that might be traumatic or possibly even, you know, just mysteries to people that they are drawn to and, and art is a way of, of expressing their search for meaning in that experience. Um, I have um, recently attended an art class uh, that's being conducted by someone at a veterans clinic here in Savannah and um, all he does is just provide a time and place for these veterans to come and, and make whatever they want to make and there was a whole range of things going on there from people copying photographs of landscapes to people doing very expressionistic abstract paintings slinging paint and doing things that look like something Jackson Pollock might have produced. Um, it's interesting that when I did my uh, dissertation research on Vietnam veteran artists, one of the questions that I asked each of my respondents was how was art therapeutic to them? And that awakened in me the uh, idea that, that there were, were a multitude of ways that that could happen. And that's sort of what was confirmed when I went to that art class. That not everybody feels like they're exercising demons through making their work. Um, but somehow the creative act is in and of itself therapeutic, uh, regardless of what one's uh, state of mind is. That, that creativity, there's something in the nature of creativity that, um, that is a very positive thing and uh, maybe it's because it is integrative, maybe it brings the whole person together.